Malachi chapter 3. And reading from verse 8. And the word of God reads, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, but you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? Tithes and offerings. Verse 9 says, You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me even this whole nation. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. Not care the storehouse. Not the pastor pocket or wallet. The store. Everybody says storehouse. storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not pour out the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruits before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 8 says, Will a man rob God? Now this is a serious matter. Will a man rob God? This is a serious offense. Will a man rob God? This is a serious charge. Will a man rob God? God. This is a serious indictment. From the way the question was asked, will a man rob Almighty God? Will a man rob your creator, mm. the one who created you in your own image, in his own image and in his own likeness. Now, if a man rob another man, he commits a crime. Mm -hmm. And the law requires punishment. Now, this portray the present condition of all of God's people who rob God in their tithes and offering. So the people ask the prophet Malachi the question, wherein have we robbed God? And the prophet Malachi was blunt in response with a quick answer, he told them in no uncertain terms, you've robbed God in your tithes and offering. Now, the people that robbed God have done what no one should attempt to do. And that is to defraud God in their tithes and offering. But in the end, you only rob yourself of God's blessings. Now, what is the tithing? Now, your tithing is a predetermined 10% established as a financial partnership with God, not with the pastor, with God, amen? Or you return your, uh, the God, you return to God in a 10% of your income 
which God personally designated for himself, not the pastor. Amen? Now, giving your tithes and your offering is not an option or a matter of choice. Why? Because your tithes belong to the Lord. As long as you're employed, as long as you work it, amen, you're supposed to give God what belongs to him. Amen. Amen. Now, given your tithe is made possible to support the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. Now, your tithe in church can be compared to a premium of an insurance policy. Now, when you fail to keep the policy, it will most certainly cause the policy to lapse. Yeah. So when you rob God of your tithes, you cancel God's obligation to provide financial security for you and your family. Because you withhold that which belong to the Lord. And when you withhold your tithes and your offering that belongs to the Lord, you sow it back to yourself. Amen? Now, when you give your tithes and your offering, it may seem that when you give, you are giving to a man. It may seem that you are giving, amen, to the pastor. But you are not giving your tithes to a man. You are giving to God your tithes. Amen. God received, amen, and accepted your tithing. Amen. Now, some people get mad with the pastor. Amen. When the pastor talk about giving their tithes and their offering. But they don't get mad with the false prophet that tells them form a $100 line. Form a $500 line. Write a check of $10,000. God is going to bless you with a house around this time next year. They don't get mad with the false teachers. But from the moment, praise God, they hear about tithes and offering. Amen. Some people get mad about that. Amen. So now this is not a prosperity message. Amen. This is biblical. Amen. I'm teaching you what God, amen, tells us to do from his word. So what they do, they retaliate and withhold their tithes from the Lord. Amen. Now when you refuse to give your tithe in, what's this church? The ministry will suffer not permanently, amen, but temporarily. To pay the rent, the light, the gas, insurance, and the internet service. We have all of those things here. Amen. Amen? But um, you yourself would stand in the way of your blessing. You are robbing yourself. Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, and the verse 38, give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give to you. In other words, God, when you give your tithes and your offering, God will use somebody to give you a blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise that. But listen, church, when you give, you give in faith. Amen. Yes. Amen. And you give what is with the right motive. Yes. Amen. And you will receive and give again and again and again. That's why we want to know why some people will keep giving. You know why they keep giving? It's because they keep receiving. Now, giving is vitally related to receiving. Give, and it shall be given to you. Amen. 
you so you have to sow a seed in the soil in order for that soil to get back to you. Amen. Now, beside the tithes, the offering belongs to the Lord also. Because it says, you have robbed me in your tithes and your offering. Amen. But there is a difference. Remember, God fixed your tithes. That is a 10%, 10 cents from a dollar. Amen. But God does not fix your offering. But he requires you, amen, to give your tithes and your offering. Amen? Okay. Now, it is up to you, the individual, to determine the amount of offering. Amen? Praise God. Or, amen, or you give not only your tithing, but your offering. God determine the tithing, but not the offering. But listen, if you fail to give your offering, although the amount is up to you, you would still rob God of what belongs to him. Listen, your offering is an optional investment. Or an extra seed, God, you sow alongside the tithe. Amen? Now look at verse 9. So God told the non tithers, those who don't give their tithes, He told them, You are cursed. Amen? You are cursed with a curse. Why? Because you have robbed me. Now, the word curse here means dire in need. Or the result of the curse is scarcity, misfortune, and the barrenness in the lives of God's people. But in order for in order for the non-tigers to avoid the curse and come under the blessings of God, God told them in verse 10, bring you all, all the tithes into the storehouse. The storehouse. Not in the pastor pocket or wallet, amen? But the storehouse. Amen, praise God. The church. Now, the storehouse back then was the temple of the Levites under the old covenant. Amen. And there was a special chamber within the temple that stored food, oil, grain, wine. Now these items brought in payment of the tithes. Amen. Likewise, church, it is required that the Lord tithing must be given through the local church. Amen? And this is how the church needs is supply. It's when you give your tithes and your offering. And I appreciate the fact of all those who give their tithes and their offering. That's why we don't talk about tithes and offering consistently. But if I see, praise God, there is a slight decline, praise God, then I'm going to raise this issue. Mm -hmm. Amen, praise God. And you know it is from the word, amen? amen? But we don't preach money here, praise God. But I preach what God requires. All what he requires is your tithes and your offering. Mm -hmm. Then God do something remarkable in this verse. He told the people, prove me now. Mm -hmm. This is the only place in the Bible that God is telling the people to prove me now. <laughs> he didn't say prove me later. <laughs> but he said prove me now. Which means when you give your tithes and your offering now, prove him. Now, 
this is a challenge presented by the Lord for us to prove him regarding the reward of tithes. God is saying, put me to the test and see if obedience to the laws of tithing doesn't pay off. God said, and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. The windows and pour you out a blessing. Amen? Amen. But what is what is now? God will only pour out his blessings only on the one condition. And that is if you begin to support the work of the ministry with your tithes and your offering. Amen? God said, I will bless you abundantly because you obey the laws of tithing. Amen? And it demonstrates also your love and devotion for the ministry, Hallelujah. the local church. Amen? Amen? Notice, God did another remarkable thing in verse 11. He told the people, that's when you give your tithe and your offering, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Hmm. And he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Now notice, in the, in the first phrase, God used the word devour. Now, the devourer in the natural is a pest that destroys crops. Amen? Then God used the pronoun he, which symbolizes, amen, the personality behind the destruction. Now, the word rebuke here means to turn back or to keep down. So what God is teaching us here is that if you don't give your tithes and your offering, he will not turn back the devourer from hindering your blessings. Amen? Amen. Go with me to Haggai chapter 1. Haggai chapter 1 and verse 2. Are you there? You get a little tough time, a difficult time finding. Just look at the monitor, praise God. In Haggai chapter 1 and verse 2, it says, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people, not carefully, <laughs> this people say, The time is not come. The time that the Lord house should be built. Now, first of all, God called, God is called the Lord of hosts. And uh, the host of heaven consists of angelic beings whom God has created and whose principal role like ours is to serve him, praise him, honor him, glorify him, and worship him. Amen. Now, the Lord of hosts would go to a great length to protect us, amen, but it all depends on our faithfulness to the Lord of hosts. But notice how the Lord displeasure is expressed in this verse. This, this people, this people say, this people say. Now notice, God is not calling the nation of Israel his people. Instead, God is calling them this people. For example, I have to break this down. When the nation of Israel live a life of disobedience, God would address them as this people. But when they live a life of obedience, 
God will address them as his people. Read your Bible. Read both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Amen? amen. Praise God. So that when I preach, you will know, praise God, you recollect, amen, yes, praise God, I can find this, what pastor is saying, amen? Now notice what these people say. Amen. The time has not come that the Lord house should be built. This is what these people say that. Amen. Now, what these people are actually saying is that the building of the Lord house should be put on hold. Amen. Now, this is a problem with religion. Religion will always have a defect to lead God out. Have you ever been among people who will discourage you by saying, well, girl, this is not the right time to pray. This is not the right time to go to church because it is too cold. Because it is raining. Amen. Now, these people, amen, praise God, spend no quality time with God. But God would intervene because these people, Israel, have neglected to rebuild his house. Amen. Notice what verse 3 says. Like God, God has to intervene here now. Amen. Verse 3 says, Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet. Now, the word that came through the prophet Haggai will no doubt impress upon the people the severity of the situation and the depth of their sins. Now, when the Lord of hosts intervened, he asked this people a question. It is time for you to dwell in your seal houses, your fancy home. Amen. And this house, that is the house of God, lie waste. Now notice the contrast between the finished and the unfinished. In other words, this people, Israel, they were too busy with their own affairs. And they were preoccupied with their own personal self-interest. These people spend their money on what they consider to be more important than investing in the house of God. They did not invest in rebuilding the temple of God and then so they lost their spiritual motivation. Amen. So God, God, raise up the prophet Haggai to motivate the self-centered people amen, that were not making God's house their first priority. That's why the Bible says don't neglect the government of the assembly. Amen. Now when these people neglect to rebuild the temple of God, they were neglecting God. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, to seek him first the kingdom of God and all and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto us. That's why it is important, amen, praise God, to put God first. Amen. amen. Not carefully. God is not going to Renege on his promises. He said, seek him first. Do you understand, church? He said, seek him first. When you do that, amen, when you put God first, he will put your children first. He will put your husband first. He will put your wife first. Praise God, amen. And I'm telling you, praise God, amen. And he said, all these things shall be added but." Seek me first. Just seek me first. Amen? Praise God. If you desire for your husband to be saved, thank you, sister. Seek him first. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, 
We don't know if you have local power in that boldness. You're very bold. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 23, Jesus said, Seek him first the kingdom of God. Amen. And all these things shall be added unto you. Now notice the contrast between the natural and the spiritual. When we put God first, amen, that is the, the condition. God, amen, blessings upon our lives will be manifested, amen, and you will be able, praise God, amen, and he will honor you because you have obeyed, amen, the laws of giving or tithing, amen, praise God, and you put him first. Now watch this. You see, our first and foremost responsibility, church, is to seek the kingdom first and not to put our personal interests before God. Don't do that. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Always make sure that God comes first. Put your creator first. He is the one, praise God, that created you in his own image and in his own likeness. He deserves your attention, praise God, amen? Put him first. Now, our needs are important, such as food, clothing, transportation, money, and a roof over our head. But when we see these material things more important than God priority and to the exclusion of our spiritual life, then our relationship with God would be spiritually effective. Effective, sorry, amen? Now, when we put God first, all of our needs will eventually fall in line. Amen. When our priority is spiritual, only then will God take care of our needs. Can I have a witness? Amen. 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 But this people, Israel, did not put God first. Spiritual things were indistinct to them. And as a result, amen, of their disobedience, this people will experience the opposite. Notice what God told them in verse 5. Now therefore, consider your ways. Amen? This means the people must give careful attention to their ways. These people must take note of what they're doing. These people must amend their ways, amen, accordingly. Amen. You see, the blessings of God depend on our obedience. Obedience to God's word brings the blessings. Amen. Amen. And not your disobedience. Always obey the word of God. Always ask God when you pick up the word of God. Amen. Ask him, pray God, to open your spiritual eyes. So that you can look beyond the natural into the realm of the supernatural. Amen. Praise God. And you will find some things, amen, that God, that you are anticipating. God will reveal it to you. Amen. Now, notice the indictment. God told these people, watch this. You have said you have sown much and bringing little. What? You have so much and you're bringing little? You mean to tell me all those overtime you're working? <laughs> and you still bringing in little? I'll oh, try. <laughs> you so much you give your labor, but you're bringing in little. Now, this is directed towards God people. Amen. Now, this is a consequence when you don't put God first. Amen. When you put your personal interests, amen, before God, 
You take your tithes money and you do something else with it. Amen? This is your indictment. You sow much and you will bring in little. You begin to experience a curse of disobedience because you show little interest in God's house. And therefore, you reap the consequences and you lost, amen, your blessings. Now notice the conclusion of this verse says, what is? Oh God. And he that earned wages, earned wages to put it in a bag of hole. I am putting my nine, I, I, I ain't dealing with that brother. Mm -mm, praise God. I ain't putting no wages in a bag of hole. Amen. Amen. Now, this is a lesson for all of us. It seems the harder <laughs> the people work, the blessings of God decline in their lives. Amen. And they just can't go forward. Why? Because you were holding from God. You were holding your tithes and your offering. Amen. You see, when you divert your tithes and offering from God, amen, from God, uh, when you divert, amen, your tithes and offering from God's work to your own personal use, this is exactly what will happen. Amen. This is exactly what will happen to you. When you earn your wages, you will put it in a bag of holes. Body quiet. That's a word. Read it. Amen. Amen. Now notice verse it says, you see, the Old Testament was a, a visible, uh, was a visible, amen, praise God. The temple was visible, amen of God divine present among his people. So whenever the people of God might be, they would go into the temple and pray. So the rebuilding of the temple will once again become a symbol of God divine presence. But before the temple was rebuilt, the empty foundation was a clear indication that God house was not truly honored. Now, go with me to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. If you find it, say amen. Praise God. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. The verse, uh, verse 12, let's say verse 11 round, sorry. Now this is what Paul says. Amen. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly. That now at the last hour here of me has flourished again. Wherein you're also careful, but you lack opportunity. Verse 11 says, not that I speak in respect of want. Uh, for I learn. He said, For I learn in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Amen. Now, first of all, Paul said, <coughs> Not that I speak in respect of want. Now, first of all, what? Is want. Amen. Want is something you just want. Amen. Now Paul is not opposing want. Or avoiding want. Because all of us usually have an urge to want something. It's not even a need, amen. But you just see it, you like it, and you purchase it. Amen? Notice, Paul continued, he said, for I have learned. Now the question is, what Paul learned? What Paul learned 
is what the Holy Spirit revealed to him. Amen. And this is what Paul learned. He said, whatsoever state I am, to be content. <laughs> Amen. Oh God, hallelujah. Amen. He said, whatsoever state I am, to be content. Amen. You will never, ever pray, suffer from lack if you follow the principle of God's word. He is so confident to be content because he knows that God will supply his need. Amen. Church, Paul genuinely appreciate the gifts of the believers in the Philippians church. But his policy was to be self-sufficient and not to ultimately depend on on the brethren for their financial support. Amen. Whatever the circumstances is in his life, Paul is content. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Paul is content. Amen. Now, contentment is not a lesson you learn overnight. No, contentment, amen, it is something that you learn through many practical experiences in life. Now, in Paul's view, whether he is destitute or well supplied, he will submit to his present circumstances. He's not going out of his way, but he will submit to his present circumstances. Now, notice. Paul, notice, Paul, notice how he termed this contentment. He said, I know how to abase. Now the word abase in context means to be humble. Now watch this. To be humble does not mean to be little yourself. Or you lack dignity. Or you are worthless. But here it means Amen. To discipline yourself. Amen. In the time of need. Hmm. Discipline yourself in the time of and wait on God. Amen. Now notice. Paul continued his secret of contentment. He said, I know how to bond. I know how to base. And I know how to bond. That is to say, I know how to keep rejoicing when I have no money in my wallet, when I have no money in my purse. Amen. Oh God, hallelujah. I will keep rejoicing. Job, I was doing some study on Job yesterday. Job lost everything, but the man still continued to worship God. Amen. Hallelujah, amen. amen. Praise God. He said, I know how to bond. Amen, prayer. That is to say, I know how to keep rejoicing. Amen. Now, in spite of these opposite circumstances, Paul was still in the will of God. You may have needs, but make sure that you're still in the will of God. Listen, you can lack certain, amen, you can lack certain things in life and still be in the will of God. On the other hand, you can have plenty amen, of material things and still be and still not be in the will of God. <coughs> you see, when you lack certain things in life, it does not mean God disfavor. Amen. And having plenty does not mean God approval. That's what the false teachers are saying. Amen. But notice Paul is saying here, godliness with contentment is great gain. Amen. Money is something you have to spend it wisely. That's true. Amen. Praise God. And everything you see you're going to buy. Amen. True. Amen. It's not even a need, but you just lost out to it. Amen. And you just purchase it. Amen. Amen. Now notice verse 13. Paul continues. He said, I can do all things 
through Christ will strengthen me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can do all things. He didn't say I can do a few things. Or a limited amount of things. He said I can do all things through Christ will strengthen me. Tell the person next to you. I can do all things through Christ will strengthen me. Tell them. Now, church, I want you to know that this verse is personal. Why? Because Paul say I. That's not selfish, brother. That's I. It's something between he and his God. Amen. And it's good to say I. Amen. He said I. I don't know about you. But me. I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. Amen? Amen. Hmm. I as a reference to himself. I can do all things as the language of faith. Hallelujah. Hmm. That's why the Bible says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Serving God is all about faith. Because you will have to wait on your blessings. Most of the time, praise God, if God bless us, amen, when you want to be blessed, you will have to wait for that particular blessing maybe two months away from now. Maybe three months or four months away from now. You want it now, but God is saying in the next year. <laughs> amen. During the process of time, your faith is developing. God knows how to deal with us. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Wait for your blessings. Amen. Amen. It will come to pass. Amen. God is not a man that he should lie. Whatever he promised, it will come to pass. God is not going to renege on his promises. Amen. Notice, Paul say, which strengthen me, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I love this. He said, which strengthen me. Which strengthen me. I can do all things through Christ. Which strengthen me, God. Hallelujah. Now watch it. Paul is not trusting in his own strength. Just to accomplish God's will for his life. It is not by might. It is not by power. But it is by my spirit. Paul knew he cannot do the will of God in his own strength. So the Bible says, Nehemiah, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And David said in the 27th Psalms, the Lord is the strength of my life. Now watch this. Paul knew it takes divine strength to accomplish God's will for his life. Listen, when our lives, church, is ruled by the word of God and by the spirit of God, you cannot be defeated. You cannot be conquered. Why? Because you can do all things through Christ. You got to tell the devil, I can do all things through Christ. Amen. When he so doubt and unbelieve in your mind, in order for you to go contrary to God's word. Amen. Now, the only way that you can be defeated is if you look at the situation and say, and the circumstances, and say, I am limited. Hmm. I don't have the ability. I don't have the opportunity. Listen. If you think, talk, and act that way, I guarantee you, you will be defeated because you speak in the language of the devil. Amen. Cross with me to 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 6. I'll close here. <clears throat> chapter 6, verse 6. It says in verse 6, But godliness, what is, oh God, with, with, contentment. Note the term with. Godliness, with, contentment is great.
bread again. Mm. Hallelujah. Godliness with contentment, contentment is great gain. It's not just gain, but great gain. Amen. Now, the false prophet in Paul's days, they outwardly, and it's happening today also, practice godliness in order to gain an abundance of riches. The false prophets, amen, taught that wealth was a symbol of God's approval of their teaching, which is a lie, and also a way of making money. The false prophets, amen, they were driven, amen, by the un un ungodly motivation of greed. So Paul, that's what you always have to get, a man of God who teaches the word of God. Amen? Amen. So Paul decided now to enlighten the believers in the Philippians church. Amen? And he told them, listen, he told them, godliness with contentment is great gain. That's a good teacher. Amen. He's teaching them the truth. Amen. Godliness with contentment is great gain. What is and verse 7 says, oh my God, what a tremendous writer. I love the way the Holy Spirit uses man. He said, for we brought nothing into this world. Oh God, hallelujah. Amen. And we can take nothing out of it. Hallelujah. We brought nothing into this world. Hallelujah. And we can take nothing out of it. Amen. Now, nothing speaks of worldly possession. You can't take anything. You can't take a house. You can't take a car. You can't take nothing. You see, hallelujah, at birth, we enter into this world possessing nothing. nothing. <laughs> and it is certain that we will leave all the material possession behind. All those wild greens, wigs, you're going to leave it behind. All those things, praise God, they're not going to heaven. Praise God. You will not enter heaven, praise God. Was not with those different colors today. You wear green, you wear green wig, and then tomorrow is a red, and then the other day is another color. Blonde. 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 <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. So you can't take nothing. All the material possession you will have to leave behind. You see, what God is showing us here is that material wealth is only temporal. Don't idolize what you have. Don't idolize the praise God, your BMW if you have it. Don't idolize your house. Don't idolize these things. Don't, don't, don't idolize them, praise God, because they are afflicted and they will pass away. The only thing a person can keep in this world, church, is the word of God, which Hallelujah. is eternal. Amen. That's why Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Amen. God, hallelujah. Keep the word of God in your heart and obey the word of God of God, live according to that word, ask God to purify you with that word, sanctify you with that word, and that word will lead you, praise God, into the presence of God in eternity. Amen. <laughs> Verse 8 says, oh my God, he said, and having food and raiment Amen. Let us be there with content. Having food, amen, and clothing, 
<laughs> he said, they will be content. Amen? Amen. Now, notice the figure of speech, food, and clothing. But I believe I'm spiritually qualified to add something else here. Housing. Because we all need a roof over our head. Amen? Amen. You're not going to want to dress naked on the road. Amen? So you need a house. You need a roof over your head. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now these are what is These are the believers need. Amen? Yes. Clothing, food, housing. Amen? Now having these needs, we can be content. Amen? Amen? I said having these needs, we can be content. Amen. I believe from the bottom of heart, some of you, you can save more, but you just like to spend unnecessary. <laughs> I believe that. Amen. And you just like to spend, spend, spend. Amen. Just be content. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Hallelujah. Now, all of these things stand for life necessity. Amen. Praise God. Now, notice, Paul is not saying that material possession have no place in our lives. He's not saying that. Amen. And also, he never condemned those who are wealthy. However, what Paul was concerned about, amen, is that they do not arrogantly Amen. Make, amen. Praise God. Their uh, their riches, their idols, amen, and their security. That was was concerned about. You can have all these things, but don't allow these things to become idols. Amen. Praise God. They just put yourself in a position as if you don't have it, as if you don't even notice these things. Amen. But you must have these things. Amen. Hallelujah. But don't idolize what you have. Amen. Listen, we must not serve God with a desire to get rich. Mm -mm. We must not serve God with a desire for grasping greed. If it is God's will for you to get rich, praise God, that's fine. But don't pursue after it. It's better for God to give it to you, just like what he did to Job. Hallelujah. Job was one of the most wealthiest men in his time. You see, when Job lost everything, it didn't broke his heart. <laughs> because the man was a worshiper. Amen. His wealth of bread was just temporary. He didn't feel it, praise God. I guarantee. Because you know why he didn't feel it? It's because when Job lost everything, Job got down on his knees. Oh God, and he stopped praising God. Amen. <laughs> He worshiped God. And because he was faithful to God, God gave him more than what he previously had. Amen? So, we serve God. What is in closing? We serve God with our tithes and offering. Amen? And at the same time, amen, praise God, we must not serve God as I said, with a desire for grasping greed. Amen. Praise God. But we serve God in our tithes and offering. Amen. And at the same time, thank God for the little that we have. Amen. 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 Thank God for the little that we have. Oh my God. Say, God, I thank you. I don't have that much. Amen. Amen. But I, I thank you, God. Amen. Praise me. That's right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for the little. Verse 19 says, what is now? He says, those that be rich fall into temptation. Now this refers to those who ambition is to get rich. Now when you desire anything more than God, or you do God will, amen, or to do God will, no doubt, amen, this will be come a terrible conflict between the flesh and the spirit. Therefore, 
give up your desire, amen, to get rich. Sure. <laughs> give amen. Give up your desire for greed. Amen. So that God, so that you will not be distracted from your commitment to God. Notice, finally, verse 10 says, hmm, For the love of money is the root of the love, not money itself, but the love. See? The love of money is the root of all evil. Now, the root of all evil means the source of all evil. Listen. Every kind of evil amen, tends to spring up where money loves have existed. Amen. You see, the love of money is idolatry. Amen. And you could be guilty of that sin. But that's when you love it. Amen. So Paul is quite blunt. He told the brethren, for the love of money is the root of all evil. You see, it is not wrong to have money, but it is wrong for money to have you. You can kill for money, they divorce for money, they do all kind of things. Amen. Any pretty for money, all of these things. Amen. Amen. The love of money, not money itself, but the love of money is the root of all evil. Amen. Amen. I'm going to close there. To God be the glory. God. Things be as God. Thank you.
Thank you.